Fremont, California. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hi. Dr. Leary, you mentioned earlier about uh, real LSD versus street LSD. Yeah. And, you know, I graduated from high school in 1975, which was virtually the late era of the drug era. I went to a nice, upstanding Catholic high school, a lot of kids with a lot of money, and fortunately for us, a lot of the stuff we bought was, was the good stuff. I'd just like to hear your thoughts on really the distinction between, you know, people say bad trips on the street, people jumping out of windows thinking they could fly. You know, a lot of that was people who got stuff that wasn't what they thought they were buying. You know, I, I was born... Uh, in 1920, I was conceived in January on the very day that alcohol became illegal. So my first 12 years on this planet, I watched all of my middle-class relatives abusing a dangerous illegal drug called alcohol. Now, the problem with prohibition is you had bathtub gin and people were blinding themselves and they didn't know what they were getting, not to mention the sleazy characters and raincoats that were, uh, you know, uh, the black market. The mafia really got a foot in this country because of the prohibition. So, oh, this is horrible. It's terrible. And uh, I've always been against all of this. And I've said, I said in 1963, I'll say it again, I think the government should kind of educate and control it and make sure that the standards are good. I said this to Ted Kennedy, so you know what you're getting. It should be prescribed by doctors so that uh, we know who's getting it. If you screw up, take away your license or take away your prescription and you put you in jail if you've caused trouble. But uh, the, uh, yeah, the bootleg booze and bootleg drugs are the worst thing. Stay away from them. And uh, please enlighten the public to the wonderful writings of Robert Anton Wilson. Well, you just have. He's a wonderful writer, and uh, his books, uh, Illuminatus Trilogy and uh, Cosmic Trigger, are in the bookstores. Get them. Yeah, I think the, the most political thing you can do is to give the individuals of any country an appliance that will help them think independently and creatively for themselves. This is the ultimate subversive tool. I was on a talk show yesterday, I guess it was in Boston, I forget where, and someone called in and said, do you realize, Dr. Larry, that what you're talking about is the most subversive thing? Uh, if people get this, they can think for themselves. And th I said, shh, you know, you don't let them know that. Yes, the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, uh, the idea that people can learn how to think and communicate clearly is, uh, is good. Here's my theory there. Can I have a second on this, Larry? Uh, our, our strategy, political strategy, is this. We feel that America is suffering now from some sort of malarial fever of the brain that's making everybody superstitious and angry and paranoid. Now, don't be upset. We think we can bring the fever down. If we can bring, if we can raise the IQ, the intelligence level, the creativity level, the independent thinking level of America by 1%, or if we can get 10% of the American people to start thinking more clearly, we can lower this feverish, superstitious, fearful uh, atmosphere and get America uh, back where we should be. So the politics is the politics of intelligence and independent thinking. Jackson, Mississippi, hello. Uh, yes, sir, Dr. I'm a history major and a lawyer from Mississippi, and I want to tell you that the Midi Blues are wrong, you're not dead. <laughs> I called at 1030 Central, and if I miss this point, I want to apologize. Uh, G. Gordon Liddy, I believe, was one of the FBI agents that busted you in Upper State New York. And if that is correct, sir, how do you feel on the fact that... Uh, 17th of 1986 would be the 15th anniversary of the Watergate break-in in which Mr. Liddy, of course, participated in. I'll hang up and listen. Thank, Thank you. you. Today is the anniversary. Well, That's correct. I, wonderful. You know, I take a bit of credit of that because Liddy kept busting me and busting me and busting me, but he never caught me with anything. He caught me with, I told you, Pete Moss, but he did drive me out of the county because it was just too much of a house that Gordon, like Inspector Clouseau with his mustache in my bedroom night after night. So I moved out to California. Gordon was a hero in the county. He said, my gosh, let's promote him to the White House. So they sent Gordon off to the White House, where he then started other midnight burglaries, which are even more far out. And between the two of us, Gordon and I, like the Keystone Cops, we brought down the Nixon administration. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gordon will confirm <laughs> the, the basic rough facts that he won't uh, enjoy my uh, glee over this wonderful feat which we pulled up. With Dr. Timothy Leary, the software program from Electronic Arts is Mind Mirror, Okanis, Michigan. Hello. Hello, Dr. Leary. Hello. 
Hello. Is it true that Marilyn Monroe or Jack Kennedy came to you for advice on using LSD? No, that's not true. It's a wonderful rumor, but it's not true. Austin, Texas. Hello. Hello, this is Boston. Oh, Boston, I'm sorry. Hello, Larry. Uh, Timothy is a person who was uh, politely asked not to complete the EST uh, training because he just didn't fit in. I think I speak with some free spiritual uh, qualification. You got booted out of EST? I did. A Boy, you naughty boy. <laughs> it was a naughty problem, indeed. Uh, Sounds like losing your library card. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> it was traumatic, Larry. It really was. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want to engage the, uh, the sort of psychedelic mythological theory or the, uh, even like, the spiritual, philosophical, intellectual, or, or even computer theory. You want, don't want the electronic, uh, Larry? No, I don't want the electronic theory. Now what theory do you want? I just want to be present with you right at this moment, uh -huh. uh, Timothy, to tell you that um, I like you and, and that the possibilities in that are an open book. And I think that I, I sense that you have always had the ability to be astoundingly, astonishingly present with w whatever's going on around you, and, and that's a clue, perhaps, to the resiliency of your of your vision and, and your fortitude in yourself, and this has been a real privilege. Well, I'm mm -hmm. going to send you a message. Open up your, your eardrums. I want your near eardrums naked, and I'm going to send you a wonderful, wonderful word of thank you very much. That was a wonderful call. Spokane, Washington. Hello. Yeah, uh, considering your fascination in the mind, what are your personal experiences and opinions of Eastern religious practices such as Zen Buddhism? Well, I went to India. I, I think everyone should take a trip over this. Almost obligatory. I took uh, Hinduism 1A on the banks of Ganges when I was a young man. I learned everything that I thought I could learn. I treasure the things I learned there. You got to keep moving. There's no final answer. Hinduism, by the way, would agree with that. So go over there, try it all. Uh, don't get hooked. Uh, don't follow leaders. Watch your parking meters. Stay away from gurus. But try it all out. Middle of New York. Hello. Hi, Larry. Hi. Uh, a couple questions. Very quick on uh, Ram Dass, uh, Richard Albert. Uh, his books have meant a lot to me. I heard that you uh, once made a comment that uh, when asked about Ram Dass, that people who get into spiritualism only do so if they have a sexual hang-up. I'd like you to comment on that. I didn't say that. I don't believe it. What do you think about what Ram Dass is doing these days with the Death and Dying Project and all this stuff? What do you think about where his head is at these days? I think it's wonderful. I think he's a great inspiration. There are millions of people out there that have been influenced in the right direction by him. More power to him. He's my partner in time, and I'm all on his side. And if he's listening tonight, uh, he, he knows already what I'm going to say, that we're good friends. A couple of moments left, Dr. Larry. Uh, any, you regret anything you've done? Well, I have, uh, I struck out perhaps as much as anyone in the league. On the other hand, I've hit more home runs. I'm right up there. I've made a lot of mistakes. But the basic trajectory of my life, I think, no matter whether you agree with me, and I don't have to agree with this, is to uh, to free yourself, to think for yourself, to question authority. And I've done that, and I've made mistakes along the line. Uh, a lot of people have misunderstood me. I've let a lot of people down because I've changed perhaps too quickly. Yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I don't regret uh, the direction and the goal. It's the American way. It's the human way to try to think better. Do you miss Harvard? Not a bit. I was up there last uh, week, and I wandered around there. And You know, I never wanted to be at Harvard. Uh, uh, I'm uh, number one. I'm not an institution. You know, some people say, "Gee, Tim, if you had played your cards right, you'd be a full tenured retired Harvard professor now." On your, and I say, "Yeah, no, no kidding." Well, thanks a lot, but no thanks. Great seeing you, and I thank Larry, you. Larry, you're the you're a pro. You're the best. It's a pleasure.